Good afternoon, dear viewers. Good afternoon. I appeal to partners, to haters, to trolls, to all those who are trying to expose us, saying that everything is wrong, everything is wrong, that all this is a fraud, this is a forgery, 400 hertz in aviation, 200 hertz in power tools, and everything we are telling is false information. I would like to remind you that at the first stages, with the same inspiration, with the same energy, you are proving that everything would be stolen, everything would go to the Canaries, but it was not stolen. No one went to the Canaries. We have built the building. Now we are in the final stage of work on external engineering networks. And has anyone apologized for their words? Somebody was telling about shopping malls, that they would make another shopping mall. And now we are in the laboratory. I want to ask, where is the shopping center here? Has anyone apologized? Saying that, sorry, I was wrong. Do you know if it's my last name? My name is Dmitry Alexandrovich. Well, catch will ask. You see, it's very easy to find me. You know my last name, my first name, my patronyme, location, and who are you? What is your name? They hid under nicknames. Who are you? You can only rattle your tongues, and you don't make any sense anyway. Because a normal person who has beliefs, beliefs that are not for sale, well, such people always say, I'm sorry, they apologize. Only, well, women with reduced social responsibility, as they say, who hide under all sorts of names. And they are ashamed to admit what they do in real life. So are you. And now they are saying again, 400 hertz, 200 hertz, okay, and then what? Will you at least explain? Yes, there are 400 hertz engines in aviation. It costs like a wing from an airplane. Why? Because thin sheet materials are used there, 0.1 millimeters thick, 0.600 millimeter thick. They're expensive and they require special treatment. After stamping, they must be fired in a vacuum at a temperature of 1200 degrees for 6 hours. Imagine what these costs are. And you tell everyone that it's all known and everyone does it. Yes, they did and they do, but it all costs a lot of money, like a wing of an airplane. And it is not for jail consumption, because there is a large content of nickel, and all nickel produced in Russia will not be enough even for a tenth of the need for the production of electrical materials. Even a tenth. Therefore, do not tell fairy tales, and do not deceive people. Because if you are amateurs yourself, this is your problem. If you want to be deceived, then be deceived, that's your business. If this were the case, these engines of general industrial design, they would have been made using a different technology for a long time. Your next argument is, if it were necessary, then the whole world would have produced it long ago. Well, if we talk about the whole world, then start with yourself. Imagine that you work at an enterprise. You come to the general director and you say, Petr Ivanovich, I figured out such a thing here. That's what I did. He will just tell you, well, get out of here with your business. And you know it perfectly well. You understand it very well. Because this Petr Ivanovich, he is an employee just like you. Because there is a master. And the master needs profit from the enterprise. And he does not need this innovation of yours. Just like 
Petr Ivanovich because his salary does not depend on it. Therefore, even if there are some solutions, everyone is sitting and keeping still. No one needs it. And so, for example, there is an engine here. I won't tell you the name of the company. Thought by a Russian company. Made in China. And sales managers, they are in Russia. And service is also located here. These engines are good because they have good input control. Very good input control. Due to this, there are a lot of advantages to these machines, but they are all made according to Soviet technology. And in China, too, according to Soviet technology. And no one will change anything because the production scheme is fine tuned, it works. Why change anything? Why should China change anything? Nobody needs it. This is the first reason. The second reason is the scientific world. Imagine what would happen if a scientist went to a conference and said, Dear colleagues, at a conference, I flushed my life down the toilet. I was wrong because I was doing the wrong thing during my whole life. I was deeply mistaken. So all my work should be cancelled. My title should be removed and let's do something else. Can you imagine such a situation? I think no one will go for it. And until the last adherent of the classical theory dies out, no one will admit anything. Then they will talk. Now they talk a lot about the great Tesla, but they forget about Morgan. Why? Because Morgan was behind Tesla. Morgan financed. He was involved with Tesla. People came to him and said, Nicole, let's do it. And he answered, I can't, because I have a contract with Morgan. Well, let's do it under your name. And how did it all end? Morgan took away the most effective projects and Nikola Tesla died in poverty. Have you forgotten that situation? You have forgotten, and I'll remind you. Similarly, the great Einstein, if anyone has read and looked at his patents, patents are double everywhere. For example, Einstein and Schutz, two inventors, two names everywhere. And why is there always a second author? And he used to work at the patent office. You can search and see. And only when the last adherents die, then all this will be revealed. It's now beginning to be revealed. It's inevitable. But it's not about that. It's about these machines. Tell me, great scientists, why we take 380 volts? 50 Hz. And with the help of a frequency regulator, we straighten it, we get a direct current, and we convert it back to 50 Hz. It depends on the acceleration characteristics, maybe a maximum of 60 Hz. Because in the USA, they make such frequencies for testing, but no more than 200 and 400 Hz. Why not? It's obvious. The answer is simple. If the classical scheme allowed it to work, then we would do it, but it does not allow it. Therefore, if you make a classic circuit on hardware at 150 Hz, you will either need to lower the overall power, reduce the induction to reduce losses, or it will warm up like a stove. That's all. Therefore, it is not done that way, although it is obvious, but we do it. Why? Because there is another misconception that they do not want to give up. That the main harmonic warms the engine. It is not the main harmonic that does it, but odd harmonics that do it. And it is customary to say that it is necessary to suppress harmonic 3, 5 and 7. Because it is these harmonics that cause maximum losses. But in fact, there are none. Because if you decompose these harmonics into Fourier series using programs, Maxwell Company, 
Then you can see higher order harmonics there. How are they formed? They are formed when the teeth of the router pass by the teeth of the stator. And they generate these harmonics. And we need to fight against them. Besides, if we take a 24 groove engine at the same time with the classical scheme, eight teeth are practically with zero induction. And the whole flow goes through the remaining teeth. If we wind with Slavanka, then two teeth have zero induction. This means that the flow spreads more evenly. Respectively, the induction is less in the hardware. There is less loss. And the fact that it is not the third, not the fifth harmonic that plays a role, but a higher one, it is confirmed by the fact that engines with a higher rotational speed, say 3000 RPM, have a high efficiency. And if you make an engine not at 3000 RPM, but at 750, its efficiency drops. If you increase it, it grows. And you can see it on the computer. Type, for example, Air 100L8 electric motor. And look at the data on it. Efficiency of 76.5%. We open more of it. The L6 engine. The efficiency is 77.7%. It grows, and if we take 3000 RPM, then the efficiency will be even greater, according to the tables. If we compare all this, then the conclusion suggests itself it is necessary to increase the engine speed, increase the current frequency. Here are the engines. All of them are Air 100 L8 donors, with the characteristics that I showed you. The most interesting thing is that if we take the L6 and L8 donors, they are often performed on the same hardware, with the same geometry in order to reduce the cost of production and not to reconfigure machines at a number of enterprises. Why? Because the back of the L8 is thinner than that of the L6. Because the flow is distributed differently there. But still, what can you build out of this? So we took the Air 100 L8 engine and wound Slavanka in it. Here it is. L6. What do we have as a result? It is one simple thing. Now there is a similar engine on the stand. The guys turned it off so that it would not make noise before moving on to other stages of the test. We got a simple data on it. It's not that different. What is the difference between it and the classic L6? In the classic L6, if you look at the technical characteristics, you can find this data here. We see a nominal torque of 22.4 Newton meters. Now, our engine has a nominal torque which is a little bit more than that, 26 Newton meters. Now, the starting torque. It is 1.9 times bigger. We take 22.4, we multiply it by 1.9, and we get 42.56 Newton meters. The starting torque that the classic engine has, this one has 63. The difference is of 50%. If we look at the critical torque, 2.2, we take 22.4 Newton meters multiplied by 2.2, we get 49.28 Newton meters. And this engine only has 66.3 Newton meters. The difference is not big. What does this indicate? There is nothing to worry about. 
The engine is good, it has stable properties. It indicates something else. The classic engine has an output power of 2.2 kW, and this one has 2.6 kW. But according to standard values, we need to have 2.2 kW, which means that in order to get to 2.2, we can discard 20% of the core here. Respectively, the cost of this engine will decrease by 20% in materials. Can we use that? Yes, we can. It's money. It's competition on the market. Question. Why don't we do this? After all, this has been proven for more than 10 years. And now everything is very simple. When they wind this motor at 50 Hz, the winding lays in the same sections, we get a 50 Hz motor. But if we connect the sections a little differently, we get 100 Hz, 150 Hz, we can get 300 Hz, while the size of the sections, the diameter of the wires remain the same. And the properties are growing, power efficiency, everything grows, and most importantly, the energy efficiency class is growing. If we look at Western samples, then an increase in the energy efficiency of the engine entails an increase in the overall size and in connecting dimensions. But in our case, the size gets reduced. One very brilliant person wrote, Dmitry Alexandrovich, you are absolutely wrong. With an increase in engine power, it is necessary to increase its shaft size. I ask why. He says, the torque is growing. I say, no. The revolutions grow. Efficiency increases, energy consumption decreases, the energy efficiency class increases, and so on. Therefore, using the same line, the same components, everything is the same. We only switch it and commute it in different ways. Thus, we can get four different engines, four different goods, with the same setup, with all the same. Is it economically feasible or not? Question, why don't we do it? I explained the reasons earlier. But, dear haters, dear trolls, you will not be beaten on your passport, but on your face, for one simple reason. You tried to restrain this process in various ways, but you failed to restrain it. And these engines will already be mass-produced on that line. And as soon as they go on sale, on mass, after certification, at reasonable prices, with excellent characteristics, then you will be thanked by all those who believed you, because these enterprises that are involved in the resale of Chinese products will slowly go to the side somewhere there. And they will have two options. Either work with these engines or disappear. And we will not bet on China, but on Russia. I have warned you. Therefore, each of you who does not come to your senses now will say thank you to you, including your children. And then you will be forced to hide the fact that you are doing all this nonsense. You may have earned some money from this or pursued some other goals. I'm speaking again about people with reduced social responsibility. This is your business. Money doesn't smell, as they say. But your children will live in the world that we will leave behind. The world we are making and the world you are making, they are sharply different. They are antagonists in their essence. But this is only one engine. And it can already do a lot of trouble for you. Because the hundredth dimension is very much in demand. There is another area. We are currently working up to 600 Hz. And we are preparing to work up to 900 Hz. This suggests 
that we can get completely different revolutions on the shaft, which were previously unattainable. This means that a whole range of equipment can be revised in terms of metal consumption. Let's say pumps, ventilators, crushes, tools, and a lot of equipment. Their metal consumption will decrease. And what do you think? What will manufacturers prioritize? Where will the price be more acceptable? With all technologies or with this? Therefore, get ready. So much company is gradually starting to move from construction to the implementation of developments and putting them into production. Get ready for that. You have a little time to come to your senses. But in the end, everyone will have to answer for everything. Who did what in life? Those guys who are involved in attracting investments, in promoting the project, information coverage. They have done a great thing. As well as other people who cover other projects. I have never allowed myself to insult other projects or say that they are bad. Because I am not an expert in these projects. Moreover, these pseudo-specialists who have caught an engine and then they say that it is a two enough engine, it always causes irony. And the most interesting thing it is that they actually get an ordinary Chinese engine and later it is an engine produced by Victor Aristop, but Victor has nothing to do with it. Such experts who do not own any programs or methods, do not know the methods of research, how they conducted sampling, and they dare to judge about things. Here is our motor. You are welcome. Anyone who doubts its characteristics, come and we will check. But at the same time, you will have to express, to say what you saw and your point of view, which will be adjusted, taken into account the experiment. Now there are 50 engines. With their help, industrial equipment is being adjusted. They will be manufactured in an industrial way, and then they will be given for certification. Our laboratory staff have made the programs, methods, and technical conditions for them are being completed now. All the documentation support is being prepared, and everything will be in place. And what are you guided by? Open the Internet at least. Take a calculator and count. Don't do anything stupid. Take care of yourself, take care of the world around you. And I think that, by common sense, you will make the right choice. Don't make mistakes, because you will have to pay, dearly pay for them. And those who you turned away from the project, they will eventually say their thank you to you. Goodbye, and see you again.